think anyone's shocked by Patrick Mahomes uh, being a week one leader as far as quarterbacks, $8,100. But do you like this matchup against Cleveland? It has a very high total on the sports book. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the Cleveland Browns were one of the worst pass defenses in the league last year. Didn't do a, a ton to get better. And I do think that Patrick Mahomes is, look, there's a lot of uncertainty up wh- when you're going to spend up a quarterback. And I think that that's the big factor here with me. With Patrick Mahomes, I'm a little scared of going against the Pittsburgh defense with Josh Allen, uh, a big revenge game for Pittsburgh. You know, Russell Wilson going up against a very strong Indianapolis secondary. Uh, you know, you don't know what's going to happen with the other two guys, with Sean Watson, Aaron Rodgers, a bunch of stuff over the offseason that we've talked about, and Justin Herbert going up against good defense as well. So I feel like a lot of your top options are kind of difficult to get a read on. And if you don't want to just play a value quarterback, I think that Patrick Mahomes is absolutely – your guy, he's been really consistent, of course, throughout his career, but the matchup here, good. And Kansas City has owned Cleveland historically. So I, I you know, at least in the Patrick Mahomes era when they've met. So I do think that this is uh, this is a spot that I'm definitely looking to target. I think that he could have a good week one. As we saw uh, last year in week one, he was he was just all right. And uh, Sammy, Wat- or that was two years ago, week one, he had that big bomb to Sammy Watkins. But uh, he, he does seem to start hot in these. He had a couple of 30 plus fantasy point games in the first few weeks last year. So I think Patrick Mahomes gets off to a good start. Jeff, 8,100 for Mahomes. You like the matchup with Cleveland? Yeah, I mean, it's really too cheap for week one. Uh, we've just got so much value to work with on week one, and we're probably going to have more with injuries popping up that 8,100 for Patrick Mahomes. It's really, when we by the time we get to the start of September, it's going to be really easy to go with like a Tyree kill Mahomes stack or Kelsey stack, right? Like there's just going to, there's already guys, like I mentioned, Chase Edmonds, T Higgins. These are, these are viable plays under 5k and you're going to be able to find a few more once the injuries start to kick in and they will, it's the NFL. It's just the nature of the business, right? So uh, Cleveland, you know, as, as Kenny mentioned, they really weren't that good a pass uh, defense last year. Now I, I do. I don't think Patrick Mahomes is going to be super highly owned. I think people are going to look at that playoff game from last season and be like, Oh, well, the Browns held Patrick Mahomes to one passing touchdown. But remember their O line was beat up. They've completely revamped it over the off season. I think Mahomes starts fast too. I think this is too cheap. Stan thoughts on Mahomes 8,100. I think he's fine. Um, I'm only going to go there if I'm stacking with uh, Kelsey or Hill, or if the ownership gets really too low, I just like too many options in the six K range and you know, even $500 cheaper. I like Kyler Murray against Tennessee better than the Mahomes matchup. So I would probably go there. Uh, it's fine. Uh, the price is palatable. Um, I just, you know, I just like the other options better. You know what, Stan, we're going to go right back to you because Kyler right. Murray is uh, slotting in second highest salary here. 7,600 new look Cardinals hosting Tennessee. He's got some new weapons, of course, with AJ Green coming in. You clearly like him. Can you expand? Yeah, yeah. If I'm going to pay up, I'm probably going to go with Murray. Um, you know, last year, Tennessee, they were 30th against the pass and in, in DVOA. Uh, you know, that defense could be worse this year. So, um, you know, he's going to get busy through the air. We know what he can do on the ground. So, you know, he's got that Konami code as floor uh, ceiling. Um, it's just, you know, totals high in this game. I just think the matchup is a good one. Uh, I, I just don't really see too many negatives in, in this matchup. Well, and the price is a good one at 7600 Okay. And Jeff, we'll go to you next. And, and just to kind of bounce off what Jeff said earlier, he felt Chase Edmonds was underpriced earlier on. So maybe that's something you consider. Maybe Murray Edmonds stack. Uh, but speaking of Murray, Jeff, $7,600. The matchup is Tennessee on the road. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think that with if you did put Edmonds and Murray in a stack, you might actually be getting access to all the Arizona touchdowns. It's really not a bad idea. Um, Thank you. These top two quarterbacks, that, and, and Stan alluded to this, but Cleveland was fourth, gave up the fourth most fantasy points against to opposing QBs. Tennessee gave up the third most. So you could really just approach week one. I know we're going to be talking about value quarterbacks for the next month. We're going to be talking about why Joe Burrow or this guy or Jacob Eason or Trevor Lawrence is such a good value. You could literally go into this week one slate, go Kyler Murray and Patrick Mahomes. I'm only making lineups with two guys. And I think you, you're, you're probably going to be ahead of the field. I think this is probably what you should be doing. These guys have terrific matchups. They're, they're going to be in high paced, uh, fast games. Tennessee is a high paced, fast scoring offense. They, they scored more points per game than KC. This Arizona Tennessee game has all the makings of a shootout in my opinion. Kyler is going to have fresh legs week one as well. There's, there's, there's no doubt. I mean, you could even say Kyler is, is a better play than Mahomes, and I wouldn't argue with you. I think both these guys, both these top two QBs, with all the value we're getting at other positions and going to be getting, uh, I think they make for the top two plays, and you really shouldn't be diving too much deeper behind them. 
Kenny, I apologize. It's Fordham product, Chase Edmonds. <laughs> so I'll you. make sure yeah. to mention that before I say his name every time. But the, the subject matter is Kyler Murray. Thoughts on Kyler at 7,600. Like it? Yeah, you're a smart guy for mentioning that and getting me uh, all chipper to answer this question. And Jeff's the smart guy for what he said about Kyler Murray. You talk about the price here. It is way too cheap. Kyler Murray at the end of last season was clearly dealing with shoulder issues. He could not throw the ball that second half of the Arizona season was just completely derailed uh, because his, his, you know, that zip was just not there on his pass. And look, he, he's a great, great fantasy player. We know this. He's a great dual threat player. I think that he has, uh, he probably has the second most rushing upside in the league after Lamar Jackson. He actually probably has top five throwing upside as well from a fantasy perspective. I'm very excited about buying low on Kyler Murray coming off of a disappointing second half. Cause I think a lot of people, you know, don't really read too much into that shoulder injury. I think it was a big, big deal. And when you talk about the pieces on this offense, you mentioned Chase Edmonds. I think that this is this is a, a dream for Kyler Murray because he's going to have Chase Edmonds on the field, hopefully more, if, Clings, if Cliff Kingsbury doesn't Kenyon Drake this situation and give James uh -huh. Conner, you know, a timeshare with Chase Edmonds. But if Edmonds is on the field and gets the ball in his hands on passing downs and, you know, and, and out of the backfield, I think that this is going to be – uh, ama amazing for Kyler Murray. And then you mentioned Rondale Moore is the fourth receiver on this team now with, with AJ Green uh, in the mix. Rondale Moore, very talented, very high on him in his rookie season. AJ Green, if he's going to, I mean, he'll be healthy week one, we think, unless he gets injured in training camp in the preseason. This could be really, really special what the Cardinals were able to do on offense. And I think that I'm buying in uh, as, as much as I can early on before the prices go up. Murray Edmonds stack, you heard it here first on the sweat. August 2nd, 2021. And Rondell Moore, but okay. And Rondell Moore. Well, that's, your, that's, your, that's your opinion, not mine. Uh, Off-season full of drama, Jeff, for Aaron Rodgers. We've talked about it quite a bit on this stream. 6,800, week one, taking on New Orleans on the road. I know you, you just mentioned this. We're going to be talking value and dissecting the numbers here for quarterbacks as we approach week one over the next month. Are you willing to pay this price for Aaron Rodgers, 6,800 at New Orleans? Oh, there's, there's been Aaron Rodgers news this off season. Really? I mean, you have to fill me in on this later, but no, look, I mean, I think after, again, after the top two QBs, you, you really start to get, yeah, these are great quarterbacks. We're talking about Josh Allen, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, but the matchups here, they start to get dicey. I, I, you know, Green Bay on the road. Look, I think Green Bay is a superior team here, but what kind of game is New Orleans going to be playing this year? Uh, again, Taysom Hill starting potentially. They're going to be trying to take the arrow to the ball and run the ball with Taysom Hill and Alvin Kamara. And look, it's in a dome. Maybe it still ends up being a fast-paced game, but um, I think it's it's really difficult for me to get excited about this. Going up against still a pretty good New Orleans defense, uh, you know, with a good defensive line, a Marshawn Latimer, who could at least limit Devontae Adams in week one. It's just not good enough a matchup for me to really get excited about Aaron Rodgers now. New Orleans has been a team that's that started slow in the past. So, you know, maybe you look at Aaron Rodgers over uh, over taking a shot with a, a Josh Allen and Russell Wilson. And I do like him better than those two guys for week one. But I'm not overly excited about this spot. Again, I'm the, of the opinion you should be paying up for Kyler and Patrick Mahomes week one. Hey, Kenny, 6,800 Aaron Rodgers. Thoughts? Yeah, I, I like it. Look, the, the Saints were really, really good defense last year, but they lost a ton of key pieces. You know, Jackrabbit Jenkins, Trey Henderson, Malcolm Brown, Alex Anzalone, who was the thorn in the side of a lot of people that decided to fade the Saints last year. Sheldon Rankins as well, Justin Hardy. I think that this is a team that is still going to be good on defense. You know, you still have some stars on that end. But, you know, are they going to be quite as good? Uh, are they going to be good enough where, you know, you're afraid to pay this kind of price? Uh, I actually do think that Aaron Rodgers is worth a speculative play here. I don't know what the offseason news is going to do to his ownership if we're playing GPPs. But in cash games... I think that he's sort of a, a, a pretty good value because I think that if you were playing a team like, you know, Houston or, or playing Cleveland, he would be up uh, probably in the top three uh, in the salary uh, in, in, you know, in terms of how much you have to pay for a quarterback. So I think that Aaron Rodgers is probably a good play here. Uh, I, I don't want to shoot myself in the foot by saying that because maybe he comes out and has 15 fantasy points and his disappointment, but yeah, I mean, why not? Right. The, the Saints have had a lot of turnover on that team. I think it's going to be an unrecognizable team. So Fire him up. Stan, 6,800. Aaron Rodgers, willing to pay? Yeah, I'm not going here. Uh, like I said, I mean, Kyler Murray's only, you know, what, $800 more expensive. And I, I like plenty of guys in the 6K range. Um, you know, I, I, I think if the ownership is low enough, you know, I'll definitely go there. I just don't see it just because there's going to be so many narratives out there. There's going to be the 
uh, angry Aaron narrative. Um, you know, the last dance with, with Devontae Adams. I think a lot of people mm -hmm. are going to flock here. I do agree with what Jeff was saying that uh, the Saints, you know, they're probably going to, you know, take the air out of the ball, kind of more ground and pound it. Um, you know, Kenny made good points in terms of, you know, roster turnover on the defensive end of the uh, side of the ball for the Saints. But still, you know, they are good. Uh, they were third in pass defense DVOA last year. Um, but more importantly, they were third in a adjusted sack rate. So they're going to put pressure. Um, and I think the, the biggest narrative I think that's going to happen is, um, you know, Aaron Rodgers threw over 40 touchdowns. What was the exact number? 48 touchdowns last year. The touchdown rate was 9.1%. Um, his career rate is 6.3. There's going to be a regression. You know, that doesn't mean that re regression is going to happen in this game. But, you know, I think people expecting, like, that type of lofty production again, um, that's going to be tough to replicate. Um, and, you know, just so everything combined, uh, the pace, the defense, um, probably elevated ownership uh, has me shying away from Aaron Rodgers. Jeff, favorite quarterback value play week one? Yeah, it's going to be Joe Burrow. The Bengals uh, still a pass-heavy offense, uh, and they're going up against the Minnesota Vikings team that allowed the eighth most passing yards per game last season. I don't see their secondary being a ton ton better. I like Joe Burrow with those increased weapons. Okay, we have under a minute now. Kenny, give me a name. Zach Wilson, five thousand oh. dollars. He's got the rushing upside. <laughs> Carolina, two hundred forty yards per game right. last year. Dan, your turn. And go. <laughs> I was gonna fit, and they didn't. The, the Carolina Panthers did not add much on defense. Frankie Louvu and AJ Boye at 29 years old were their biggest transactions. Okay, Stan, quickly. All right, I really like this uh, Atlanta uh, Philly game, so I like both the quarterbacks in this one. Matt Ryan at 6,000, Jalen Hurts at 6,400. I think they're both uh, in really good uh, situations here. Uh, I'm gonna go with Jalen Hurts just because of the Russian upside. 